Oh, I should change my name. We'll be going live here in just, or we'll start in just a second. Maybe if you go to the YouTube page, then say if we're live. Hello. Hello. You're muted, Nagy. Oh, oops. I was just laughing and saying that. We're getting through a couple technical. Not exiled because you booted him out before. It won't let him in. You have to, like. He's stuck. <laughs> you probably have to, like. Hmm. Security. <laughs> Is it working? <laughs> I don't know how to reinvite someone back in. Should we just start a new Zoom call quick? Uh, we can't because it, it, this is the one that's linked up to go live. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, <laughs> I'm gonna try sending him one. Welcome, everybody, if you're uh, <laughs> joining just now. Um, Oh, I have a good idea. Um, Mine still doesn't say it's live. Log in as UEC. Doesn't say we're live. It says it's not live for me. It says it's live for me too, but I'm not seeing it on the YouTube page. You don't see the three of us on the YouTube? No. Mm -mm. Uh-oh. It says we're live we're on YouTube. Yep, yeah, we're good. We're good? OK, cool. Welcome, everybody. All right, I mean, it looks like only a couple people were watching, but do you see the chat I sent in the YouTube um, channel? Yes, welcome to the How to Train Your Dragonfly virtual. Yay. I'm so excited for today. <laughs> we're working on getting our fourth member in here. We'll get started in just a second. Lots of uh, technical difficulty. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Wait, Maggie, do you see us live right now on the YouTube? Yes, I do. Okay, it was what doesn't. Hmm. Here, let me. Hey, so... everybody, if you're watching right now, go ahead and say what's up in the chat. Let us know you're there. Let us know that you can see us.
I don't know how to, yeah. Got it. Do you think we could just start a new one quick? Okay. Oh! Oh, here we go. Yay! Fourth member. Yay. All right. Mr. Vargo, are you with us? I believe you're me. I am. Can you hear me now? Yay, you made it in. Oof, that was uh <laughs> How was your journey? That was uh, stressful. <laughs> All right. Um Tim and uh um Elizabeth, do you see us on the YouTube live page? Do you see the four of our faces? I see just I see just you. Oh no, wait. I just see. You should turn your video on, Tim. It's probably also because it's lagging right now. Mm -hmm. Or like there's the time delay. Uh -huh. I'm at the YouTube live. I just see the hand and the dragonfly. Uh-oh. So try going to the upper left of the zoom. Yeah. Where it says live in red, click that drop down and then you should be able to click stream, view stream. Huh. I mean, are people not. Oh, uh, now I see. Now I see the three of you. Well, Tim, you need to turn your video on. We can't see you. Oh, you need to turn my video on. Oh, you're. Well, yeah, right. The link that I sent to everybody. What the heck? That's so weird. I don't think people are seeing us. If I go to the Facebook Live page, I still just see the hand. But if I go to the Zoom link, I see us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. This is interesting. In YouTube, I see three of us, but not ten. Now I see Tim. It must have. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, it's a different link. All right, go back to Facebook. I gotta email everybody to give them a new link. So none of this is actually being watched by anyone. Probably not. Okay, that's not a bad thing right now. <laughs> With our technical difficulties. Oh, I can't chat, can I? Uh, not unless you're logged in. Oh. Because like we could say there's a technical difficulty. On YouTube or? Yeah, on the YouTube live. Oh, yeah. I got to email everybody. I guess we could stop being live right now then. No, no. This is the right one that I'm sending. Maybe delete that first one, that first post on Facebook. Yeah.
It says there's five people waiting. Is that like the four of us plus the you, the Zoom account? It says two watching now. Oh, now it says six. Watching now. Okay, we need to send everybody to the new. Hey, everybody, if you can see us, go ahead and chat. Uh, just um, uh, type in the chat to let us know you're there. <laughs> There's seven people now. Suspense is just too much. <laughs> well, we have six people watching the one where we're all live right now. So I think we're, I mean, I think we're good to go. Please okay. let's for watching. Yeah. Well, should we get started? I think I, I let everybody know that I registered, gave them the right link. Um, um, and I think we're good to go. Okay. <laughs> Right, and that is, so um, I think if you don't have a YouTube account, you're not able to type. Oh, right, if you if that. you don't have a YouTube account, you won't be able to chat. So um, no worries if you don't have an account. Um, why, don't we get, why don't we get started? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's begin. Welcome everybody to the uh, Dragonfly celebration um, uh, this weekend, July uh, 11th. Um, we are uh, doing this family-friendly dragonfly event in conjunction with the Wisconsin Dragonfly Society and their statewide bio blitz uh, going on throughout Wisconsin. Um, we have a, uh, a few activities and uh, a brief overview of um, dragonflies and damselflies uh, that we'd like to share with you and then we'll follow it up with trivia at the very end. Uh, thank you again for bearing with us through some technical difficulties. Uh, we're learning a lot uh, through this time. I never thought I'd become be live streaming on YouTube at this point. Uh, so uh, thank you for bearing with us. Um, we're going to get started today with, and go through an overview of um, dragonflies and damselflies, uh, followed by craft, and then by at a craft at 11:30, and then um, trivia at 12 p.m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Um, oh, I should, we should probably, does someone want to talk about some of the events going on uh, next week? Um, uh, and with the adversity and stuff like that while I get set up for the next portion? Sure. Um, so next week, we also have an exciting event. Um, it's for all ages, adults and um, kids too. Um, called Yardversity, our Yardversity Blitz, and that's on Saturday um, at 8 a.m. So uh, that's a really fun event um, that we're, it's our first time hosting an event like this, um, but the goal is to study the biodiversity that we have in our own backyards. Um, so looking out my window right now, I see a lot of different types of plants a lot of flying insects and birds. Um, so all those things we can record um, using a free app on our phones called iNaturalist. Um, and then that data gets sent um, and used for greater uh, conservation efforts. Um, so that day <clears throat> we'll have a discussion um, on some, some fast facts of common backyard wildlife. And then we'll also have um, an hour where we'll go out 
in our backyards and study um, what we have uh, just out our windows. Um, and it's a really exciting potential if you think about all of the work that's been done in conservation and ecology, that so much of it has been done on public lands, but about 80% of the country is in private lands. And if you think collectively about how much our backyards, our little backyards, if you put them all together, there's so much land there that has really never been studied, uh, at least to, to any kind of degree. And this is kind of like a new frontier in science research is, uh, is taking all of our backyards and it could tell us so much uh, about how the world works in particular conservation and what people can do. So it's a pretty exciting project that's being launched with several partners around the country. And uh, we're hoping that it creates a database that we can all use to learn and study. And it's, it's pretty exciting. So Yardversity, if you're hearing it for the first time, hopefully it won't be the last and hopefully it will grow into something really big. Cool. All right. Well, if you don't know what a dragonfly or a damselfly is or what any of those fly insects are, you are in good luck. Um, we are going to be going over what a dragonfly is and what a damselfly is and why they're so beautiful, why they're so important, um, and why you should um, start uh, watching them and observing them. Uh, right. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, and we're going to go... Uh, through to start off how to train your dragonfly. Um, I must admit, I have not watched the how to train your dragon movie. Ah, so I, yes. <laughs> They're so good. Have you all seen how to train your dragon? I have. All four of them. Four of them? Three of them. They're awesome. And they're all good, too. Like, the sequel. They're all good. Oh, they're so good. Well, insects and dragonflies can be just as fun because they are in real life. Um, and uh, uh, we're going to get some, fa some fun facts of why potentially dragons and dragonflies can be related in some, some way. All right, so uh, the first question that we uh, need to ask ourselves is, what is a dragonfly? Um, is it a, is it an animal? Is it a, a does it have fur on it? Does it does it fly? Does it crawl? Is it a plant? Um, and actually, uh, these are ancient creatures that were around before the dinosaurs. All right, so that was over three hundred million years ago that we had dragonflies flying around. So they're older than the T-Rexes um, and all those other dinosaurs that I can't name. <laughs> um, uh, and the study of this, all right, this is the coolest word that you might learn today is, uh, I might need help pronouncing this myself. Um, I didn't practice this before, but Maggie, would you help us um, uh, talk about the study of? Odinates? <laughs> oh, the, oh, the ontology. There we go. The study of dragonflies and damselflies. Um, so it's a really cool uh, branch of science that you can um, uh, learn more about dragonflies and damselflies. So, Maggie, what is uh, a dragonfly? Can you can, can you help us narrow down a little bit uh, what what they are? Yes. Um, so they are animals uh, in the highest order. Um, they are also insects, so um, they, that means they have six legs and they have three parts to their body. They have a head, a thorax, which is basically like their torso, um, and then they have their abdomen, which is kind of, I guess, what we would think of as legs. It's that long part. Um, I'm just trying to think in human terms here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Um, and then furthermore, they belong to what's called an order. Um, and this is a way to organize uh, organisms. Um, and that order is called odonata. So dragonflies and damselflies are often referred to as odonates. 
And if you're having trouble learning the difference, head, thorax, abdomen, there is that age old uh, song for children, head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, <laughs> head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and they go in order. Maggie, is it true? Do dragonflies breathe fire? Breathe fire? Well, I don't know about maybe in before the dinosaur times, but they sure don't these days. <laughs> so um, no need to be afraid of them blowing fire at you. They're not actually dragons. They're a little different than dragonflies. Is that right? Yeah, a little different than dragons, but they can fly pretty well, just like the big dragons. And if they're dragonflies, then they must be flies, right? Mm, not quite. Oh, it's so confusing. <laughs> so where where might I see a dragonfly? Um, where where should I go to find a dragonfly? Well, if you step outside in the summertime, chances are you'll see one potentially wherever you are. Um, they span a lot of different types of habitats. So if you're out in a big field or in the woods, you might see some. Um, but one thing that they have in common is that they all like to be by water. So oh. this could be a lake or a pond or a river. But what happens in the winter? I, I'm by a big lake and I don't see any dragonflies around. Yeah, so in the winter we don't really see adult dragonflies. Um, there's a really interesting fact about these guys. Um, they are not only in this flying form, but when they're babies, um, so similar to like a monarch butterfly caterpillar that you see on plants, um, before it becomes an adult, the dragonfly um, actually lives underwater. Wow. So in the winter time, a lot of the dragonflies are underwater as babies. That's awesome. So how do they breathe underwater then? I don't understand. They have little structures on their body that are like gills, and it allows the water to pass over them. Um, and it actually helps them move too underwater so they can breathe and move. I think we might be watching a video on this later, but that's so cool. They're like a fish, and then they're like a bird flying in the air. That's so <laughs> the best right. of both worlds. I thought I heard the word damselfly, and I'm a little confused about that because I thought this was about dragonflies. That's a great question because we're going to talk about the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly. Um, Meg, can you help us give us like maybe one or two big differences between the dragonfly and the damselfly? Yeah, so first off, um, back to that order of classification called Odonata. Um, that includes both dragonflies and damselflies. So they're kind of like cousins to one another. Um, dragonflies, you can typically see flying around. Um, they're pretty big. And then when they land, if you ever see one landed on uh, like a stem or something, they'll hold their wings wide open like this picture on the left. Oh, wow. But damselflies, when they perch on vegetation or on a plant, um, they'll hold their wings closed up over their abdomen or over their back. So if I hold my arms really far apart right now, I'm kind of like a dragonfly. And then if I hold my hands together behind my back, my wings would be, or my arms would be like a damsel fly. Is that right? Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. I tried to follow you, Ethan, but I think I should stretch next time I do that. I think <laughs> I may have hurt something. That's good. We should have a stretching, uh, a yoga session for dragonfly and damsel fly yoga. There's got to be a dragonfly pose. There's got to be. I think there there is, and if there's not, we will start our own yoga <laughs> session. Do dragonflies and damselflies both live in the same habitats? Mm. That's a good question. Um, a lot of the time they do, um, because they both need water to reproduce and have babies, because remember those babies live under the water. Oh, um, remember you saying that. But depending on the species, so depending on the type 
of dragonfly or damselfly, um, they'll prefer different places to live. So some prefer living really close to the water. Some prefer living farther away from the water. Um, it all depends on the individual. Before we move on, I think I remember that dragonflies are actually quite a bit bigger than damselflies. And they're maybe the size of uh, a cookie in a sense, of a large cookie. And a damselfly is maybe the size of like an Oreo. Ooh, both equally as tasty. That's right, but don't eat dragonflies and damselflies. <laughs> Now, wait a second there. I, I thought insects were the pr protein source of the future. Maggie, are there people that are eating dragonflies around the world? I bet there are. Oh, gosh. I don't know if I know that answer, but I wouldn't be too surprised. So our two new ventures is, is dragonfly yoga and dragonfly food. We can, no. make, like, we can make like breakfast cereals. We could make, you know, a flour, I bet. Uh, we could even make cookies out of the dragonflies that we were just talking about. No, we don't want to eat them. <laughs> maybe, right. maybe you, Tim, but I like looking at them. I'll, I'll send right. you my first million. OK. <laughs> All right, let's do some fast fact on dragonflies here. Um, how, many, how many species of dragonflies do we have, Maggie, in Wisconsin? In Wisconsin, of dragonflies? Um, so species, meaning different types of dragonflies, mm -hmm. uh, we have about 117. There are 117 different species of dragonflies in Wisconsin? Yes. Oh my gosh. Isn't that a lot? That, that, is, that is crazy. And I had a question. How do they, how do they eat? Do they, catch their in, do they catch the insects with their mouths? Um, so when they're flying, uh, some do catch them with their mouths, but what's kind of funny is I bet you never really notice a dragonfly walking. Mm. Um, and it's interesting because dragonflies don't really walk with their legs, but they actually use their legs as a sort of a basket to catch flying insects like mosquitoes while they're flying and then bring them up into their mouth. So it's as if I scooped some food in my hand and then I shoved it in my face, right? Yes. Okay. While flying. Wow, that is crazy. All right, we need some fast facts on damsel flies. Those are super cool. Um, I'm curious how many species of damsel flies are there? Are there 140 species too of uh, damsel flies, just like dragonflies? So in Wisconsin, we have about 48. 48. Well, not quite as many, but still, that's quite a lot. And they all look different. They're all colorful. Um, there's a lot to be found. Wow. So what is easier to catch, a dragonfly or a damselfly? Ooh. That's a really good question. Um, so sometimes if you are out in a park um, and you have a net, um, and you safely catch one of these individuals. Um, damselflies are actually easier to catch. Um, they are harder to see because they are small and they like to uh, spend a lot of their time in low um, vegetation or plants. Um, but they aren't quite as strong of flyers compared to the dragonflies. So they're, they're easier to catch because they're lower down and they are a little bit slower. Is this because of the way their wings are positioned? Kind of like how earlier the dragonfly wings were kind of parallel to the body, whereas the damselfly is kind of more pointed up? I'm not entirely sure if it's because of the wings. Um, it could also just be their size as well, because they are so small um, that when the wind blows, they are much more affected by it than the big hardy, cookie-sized dragonflies. Um, but the wings could definitely have something to do with it, too. Maybe it could be because, like, a little baby human can't really run that fast. But a big human who's all grown up could probably go a little bit faster than a baby. 
All right. Moving on, uh, we talked a little bit about this, um, uh, but this is where the dragonflies and damsels fly, damsel flies fall in the taxonomic range. What the heck is taxonomic range? Tim, I think this one's for you. I'm uh, taxon taxonomic range. Yes, that's a long word with uh, about 11 or 12 different letters. Taxonomy <laughs> is the study of how organisms are related to each other, kind of like your family tree. Like if you were to draw out yourself and then you write down your mom and your dad as the generation above you, and then you draw a line with your sister, and then eventually you get your cousins and your grandparents and your great uncles and your great aunts, and eventually we're all related. But what the taxonomic tree does is it relates organisms to each other. Because in addition being, to being related to our relatives, we are also related to primates, chimpanzees, and we're also related to gorillas, and we're also related to wolves, and we're also even related to bacteria if you go back far enough. And so what the taxonomic tree does is it takes all those organisms and it puts them in a way that you can see how closely animals are related to each other. And it starts off with the really big divisions like kingdoms and it works its way down into species. And that's what a taxonomic tree is. So what you see here, uh, the domain is even bigger than a kingdom. And then you get into kingdom like animals and plants and then you get into phylum Chordata, it means uh, animals with backbones, essentially. So if you reach behind your neck and, and into your back, there's a bunch of little bumps that go from your head all the way down your back. And again, I need to stretch to, before I can do this, but uh, that means the animals with back backbones. And some animals don't have backbones. In fact, most of them don't have backbones. And then if you make the next step down, you get into a class. And uh, the class of dragonflies and damselflies is different from the class of mammals like you and me, as is the phylum. It's also different. So where we share with dragonflies and damselflies actually goes all the way back up to the kingdom. And uh, we split there because we are animals. Actually, excuse me, it goes, it, we are all animals. That's what we share. And then we split because if you were to take your finger down a dragonfly, back you wouldn't see those little bones that make up the backbone mm -hmm. and then you get down into order and family and genus and species uh, and that's where there's all these little differences and species uh, we're all the human species homo sapiens and but all of these dragonflies and damselflies represent a lot of different species which is where what Maggie said at the beginning there's a hundred and some different kinds of species of dragonflies and damselflies just in Wisconsin. Holy smokes. That's crazy. Thanks for sharing your knowledge, Tim. Oops. All right. Here's a quick video. On... Oh, looks like it's not loading here. All right. Well, this. Uh, uh, video was showing um, uh, uh, kind of a, a brief life cycle of dragonfly, but it looks like it's not loading, so we'll move on. But we don't really have time for it, so it's perfect. I do just want to point one thing out, though. I bet some of you are wondering, what are we looking at in this picture? Um, this is a picture of either a dragonfly or damselfly underwater in its larval form. So like if it were a caterpillar, um, it's a baby under the water. And that huge protrusion under its chin, so we're looking at its head there, and then it, it has this arm thing sticking out of its chin. That's actually its lower jaw. What? Yes. So underwater, the babies have this jaw that can shoot out to help catch prey. And it shoots out about a third of the, the length of its body. And it's very fast, too. So My they lower jaw can't even make it pat more than one inch <laughs> past where it is right now. That's crazy. All right. So let's talk about briefly about the, the, the body parts of a dragonfly. 
This is an adorable dragonfly. And we see, uh, in this figure, five main identifying parts of a dragonfly. Do you want to help us out here, Maggie? Sure. Um, so how we talked about before, they have the head, which is where the eye sits. Just like us, we have our eyes on our head. And then the thorax is that midsection, like your torso and your shoulders and all that, your upper body. And then behind that, we have the abdomen, that long part there. So we see a lot of different colors and shapes and sizes of each part, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Um, dragonflies also have little antenna, and then they have four wings. So dragonflies, all their wings, um, their front wings are a little bit smaller than their back wings. And damselflies, all their wings are about the same size. Wonderful. Wow, it looks like damselflies are pretty similar in the fact that they have antenna, eyes, an abdomen, a thorax, and legs as well. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty similar. They do look a little thinner though than the dragonfly. So what do dragonflies and damselflies eat? Can you all tell what it's eating right now? All I can say is I probably wouldn't want to eat one of those. Oh, that looks dangerous. That looks very dangerous. I mean, more dangerous for it than the dragonfly, but still. <laughs> so dragonflies eat a lot of different types of insects. Um, so dragonflies are carnivores, which means they eat meat. So if they were people, they'd be eating a lot of steaks and hamburgers, mm. hot dogs, chicken. Um, they like to eat other animals. Um, one of their favorite foods, especially when they're underwater as a baby, is mosquitoes. So as an adult, they'll fly around and catch lots of mosquitoes, even hundreds of mosquitoes every single day. Wow. Um, and underwater, they'll eat the mosquito larvae. Uh, so if you don't like mosquitoes, naturally, you should probably like dragonflies. Thank you, dragonflies and dam damselflies. Why don't we all say it right now out loud, thank <laughs> you, dragonflies and damselflies, for eating those mosquitoes. Thank you. Thank you, dragonflies and damselflies, for eating those mosquitoes. Oh, all right. Here's another video that looks like it's not going to load. Um, but this is showing you a video of a dragonfly catching an insect in the middle of the air. Super, super cool. If I encourage you to look up videos of this and you're going to be awestruck by that. What the heck is this? That doesn't look like a dragonfly to me. Is that so, a dragonfly? I, I'm not sure yes. what that is. Take a guess. It looks like a really big spider of some sort. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which way is the head and which way is the tail. Can you help us out here, Maggie? I can help. Um, so this is what's called the dragonfly nymph. So we've talked a little bit about it. Um, this is the larval stage, so the baby stage of a dragonfly's life, where it lives underwater. Um, so we have the head on the right side. Wow. And remember that really large jaw comes out to catch prey. So that jaw is tucked under the head right now. If that little red mouse were prey, that jaw would pop out and grab it. <laughs> so these underwater live anywhere from a few months to a few years, depending on the species. Is it true that they propel themselves by pushing water through their body? It is true. And it's so cool to see. What they actually, the hay? What was that? What the hay? <laughs> so they intake water um, through their butt, uh, through their rear end, 
and it, it, yes, and it runs through um, little gill-like structures. And then in order to breathe and to move, the water then moves back out. But they are able to do this very fast if they need to in order to escape a predator or catch prey. So it's like a jet or a rocket that takes off really fast, um, but it's all just water. So how come we never see them like that, Maggie? Where would we, how would we, how would we find them like that? So we never really see them like this because they are underwater, um, usually in a pond or a river. Um, but then as they're getting ready to become an adult, um, probably somewhere around middle school, high school, they come out of the water and then they um, attach themselves onto a plant, like these pictures here. This is where we might see them more often. So if you're walking along a shoreline next to a pond or a river um, and you look at the cattails or other plants that are coming out of the pond, um, you'll sometimes see these little husks uh, either empty or full. Um, and that is a dragonfly or a damselfly coming out to become an adult. Super cool. So this is kind of like how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Kind of, yes. Um, these odonates, they actually, they don't pupate though. So like in a butterfly, you'll see that it turns into, a, it makes a chrysalis um, and then it pupates and then it turns into an adult. But dragonflies, they keep the same form um, their entire childhood, you could say. Um, and then they peel out of this structure um, as an adult. And that's called incomplete metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, holy yes. cow. So if you ever hear about metamorphosis, that works for butterflies and dragonflies. Super cool. Wow, are these all dragonflies? What do you think? So many different colors and patterns and shapes and dots. This is amazing. And these are only four of them. Mm -hmm. Can you help us quickly identify four of these common species of dragonflies? So if we, we can be, so if we see them outside, we, we might be able to guess at what they are. Yeah. So first we know they're dragonflies because of their wings. They're holding them out while they're perched on something. Um, on the upper left, we have a common green darner, which is one of our biggest dragonflies. Um, and if you ever see them flying, you'll see that they have that green thorax, so that green torso and the blue abdomen. Then on the right top, we have a 12 spotted skimmer. These are really common around ponds, um, but you'll see them almost everywhere in Wisconsin. Um, and they have 12 spots. So if you count those dark spots on the wings, you'll count up to 12, three on each wing. I think my math added, added up correctly and I got 12. Um, lower left, we have a Halloween pennant. Um, these are very, very pretty dragonflies. They love to perch at the very top of uh, like a stick um, or like an empty uh, bare tree branch. Um, and then they just kind of sit there kind of like a flag, like a pennant. Um, and they have that really pretty dark brown and orange coloration. It reminds me of a jack-o'-lantern when it's a glow. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, on the lower right, um, do one of you want to talk about this one? Is that a, is that a, a black tail? No. Com common Close. White. Oh. Hmm. Is that a common white tail? Yes. Oh. It is a common white tail. You can tell by that very white tail, which is actually the abdomen, um, and those dark bands on the wings. Super cool. They look very similar to the 12 spotted. Mm -hmm. 
there are some uh, common common damselflies. Can you help us out here? Um, sure, I can do my best. Um, <laughs> so on the upper left, we have what's called an eastern forktail. So they're bright green at the front and bright blue at the back. They're really, really pretty. And if you're walking near a pond or along a trail near water and you look in the plants alongside the trail, you might see these guys dancing around. Um, on the bottom left, we have an ebony jewel wing. These Ooh. are beautiful damselflies. Um, they are really metallic. Depending what angle you are in the sun, they'll either look green or blue and shiny. And they have these really thick, velvety looking wings. They're wow. very pretty. Are those the only damselflies that have dark wings? Um, yes, actually. Um, there, there are other spe there's one other species that has similar dark wings, um, but this is very common in this species um, or typical of this species. And a lot of other damselflies, like the ones in these pictures, have those clear wings. Super cool. That's a good point, Elizabeth. You can see that damselflies come in other shapes and colors. That some have blue, some are more gray, some hold their wings out rather than together. Some have blue eyes, some have black and green eyes. So they're so colorful and beautiful. Um, all right, so what can you do to help? Um, how can you help these dragonflies and damselflies? Because there are a lot of mosquitoes out there and we need them to eat those mosquitoes. <laughs> right? So one of the things you can do is to build ponds in your backyard, or you can go to a local park um, and advocate for them to have uh, ponds and not to remove them. Because dragonflies and damselflies uh, spend most of their life in the water. So we definitely want good, clean water sources for our dragonflies and damselflies. What else do we need for them? What else can you do to help? No pesticides, right? Insects are very, very sensitive to pes pesticides. And so when you spray pesticides on your lawn or somewhere in your garden to get rid of those insects that are maybe hurting your lawn in some way, that actually hurts our dragonflies and damselflies. So go ahead and encourage your families or parents to uh, avoid using pesticides if they can, um, and it'll help uh, not only the dragonflies and damselflies, but so many other awesome creatures, plants, and animals. Another thing you can do specifically for dragonflies and damselflies is to plant um, hedges or bushes um, uh, in your yard uh, because it, it helps kind of provide a little hotel for them when it rains. Um, and it gives them cover so their uh, delicate wings don't get battered down by the rain. And the, the, uh, one of the, the next best things you can do is to plant native plants. Um, native plants are plants that have been around in this area um, for a very long time and that the ecosystem is very uh, used to those plants. And um, the drainflies and damselflies recognize those native plants and it provides more insects for them to eat and in turn helps the drainflies and damselflies. So go ahead and uh, encourage your family to reduce their amount of use of pesticide use, to plant native plants, to plant hedges, um, and to um, uh, ensure you have clean water in your backyard or in your local park. All right, we have uh, uh, overshot um, our time, but uh, what, what do you all think we should do? Seeing all these colors really makes me want to make my own dragonfly. I'd like to see that right now. I think Heck that's a yeah, great idea. Yeah, let's do it. All right, just one second here as we transfer. I'm going to um, 
All right, the three of us, except Elizabeth, will we'll leave and we'll be, be, be back um, in 15-ish minutes, um, however much time Elizabeth needs to get done. Um, and she'll just let us know um, when we're ready to come back. So at this point, we're gonna hand it off to Elizabeth to lead you into a fun craft. So uh, get those materials that you, uh, um, uh, from the materials list or whatever you have lying around and follow along. And then the three of us will see you soon in just a minute. Good luck, have fun. All right, bye. Okay, it is now time to do the dragonfly stained glass craft. Um, the end result will look like this. And if you don't have, if you did not read the materials list, I'll go over what we need really quickly. So for this craft, you will need construction paper of any color. You will need scissors, a glue stick, and last but not least, tissue paper of all sorts of colors. And a pencil to draw your dragonfly. Okay. So I decided I'm going to make my dragonfly a purple color. And before we get started on making this craft, we kind of have to draw a dragonfly out first. So I'm gonna show you here. Now you can use a pencil to draw your dragonfly. Um, I'm going to use a marker, so it makes it easier for you to see. As stated before, um, we learned a little bit about the anatomy of the dragonfly. So we're gonna start off by drawing out the abdomen of the dragonfly. And it's going to be a long oval, long oval like so. Next, we're gonna draw the thorax. It's gonna be a semicircle at the top. And then we're gonna draw the head of the dragonfly, which is another smaller half circle. So here we have the head of the dragonfly, the thorax, and the abdomen. Next, we're gonna go over how to draw the wings. Now, when you're drawing the wings, you need to think big, big, big circles. So we're gonna start off by drawing a really big ovalish circle from the thorax. So there's our first wing. I'll show you really quick what it's looking like so far. Okay. Then we're gonna draw another really, really big oval circle at the bottom of it. So here we have our two wings. So now what you did on this side, you're gonna do exactly on the other side. We're almost done drawing our dragonfly here. So again, we want to think big, 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 big circle, big ovalish circle. And then right directly under it, we're going to draw another one. So this is what your dragonfly should look like. It doesn't have to be completely perfect. Now, before we cut this out, you're going to do another circle in the middle of it like so and it's going to look like this now you're going to do this circle on the rest of the wings here almost done now we got to do what we did on this side to the other side There we go. So the end result of your dragonfly should look like this. Um, now we're going to cut it out using the scissors. So we're gonna first start off by cutting out the abdomen here. Go all along. And then we're going to cut the wing out. Carefully cutting the, our dragonfly out, like so. Now I chose my dragonfly to be purple because it's my favorite color, but your dragonfly can be any color that you wish. So here we go. We have the first set of wings cut out here. 
Now we're going to cut out the head of the dragonfly very carefully. Now we're on to the other pair of wings. Our dragonfly is almost free. Almost there around this wing. And now we're gonna cut out the rest of the abdomen. There we go. Your dragonfly, once you cut it out, is going to look like this. Now to get that stained glass look in your wings, um, we're gonna have to cut these circles out here in the middle. So what you in order to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the wing, gently fold it in half, and cut right in the middle. That will make it easier for you to cut around that circle. But do it very carefully. You're gonna cut that circle out. And if you need help with this, um, don't be afraid to ask your parent or guardian to help you out. But we want this part out so you can um, decorate it with the tissue paper. Now, if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, um, you can also make all sorts of intricate designs in the wings, but you might need an exacto knife to cut them out. But for now, we're just gonna do a wide circle here. So just like you cut out this one, we're gonna cut out the rest of the wings. So carefully in the middle, gonna make a small cut, and then we're gonna cut that circle out. Very carefully so we don't accidentally cut the entire wing off. So as you're doing this, um, you can start kind of thinking about what kind of tissue paper you want to glue into your wings. Um, and you can do any kind of color that you'd like. If you only have one color of tissue paper, that's okay. Um, if you have various colors and you want to color your dragonfly wings, all sorts of colors, you can do that as well. Um, and I'll show you a few examples before we get into that. Okay, so it looks like we have one more wing to cut out here. If, and then we can get started on decorating our very beautiful, colorful dragonfly. Let's go very carefully as to not to accidentally cut the wing off. Okay, looks like that is done. So your end result, I'll move the camera so you can see. Should kind of look like this. Um, as you can see, you have the marker side on this side is, and the marker side is where you want to glue on the tissue paper so that when you flip it over, you have a cleaner look. Um, so it should look like that. Um, in terms of what patterns you want to do on your dragonfly, it's completely up to you. Um, here's an example. So on this wing, I did a various um, different colors, kind of like a rainbow look. At the bottom here, I did uh, pink and purple only. And this side, I did yellow and blue. Um, it's completely up to you how you want to design your dragonfly. But before we start gluing, the tissue paper on here, we need to cut out our tissue paper. So your tissue paper, um, you wanna cut it out in small squares that kind of look like this. And we'll, I'll kind of go through how to do that. But you do want smaller squares like this. And it can be any color you'd like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my tissue paper here and we're just gonna slowly cut it in half layer that piece on top of this one and just keep on cutting and layering until you end up with smallish squares. Like so. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna layer it on our dragonfly. Cut in small square pieces. 
Okay, so I have some blue tissue paper cut out here. Um, I think I'm going to do a pink color next for my next tissue paper pieces. This dragonfly is gonna look really pretty once it's done. So again, we wanna cut our tissue paper in small squares so we can layer it on our dragonfly wings. Go. So here's the pink tissue paper. And I think aside from having blue and pink, I'm going to pick one more color to add to my dragonfly. I'm gonna go with yellow. So let's quickly cut this tissue paper. And then we'll get to gluing it on. Here we go. So there is the yellow tissue paper that I'm gonna use for my dragonfly. Okay, adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so again, we want to glue the tissue paper on the marker side. Um, and it's best if you use a glue stick, like I'm going to use, but any adhesive will work. Um, if you don't have a glue stick, you can use um, regular Elmer's glue like this, but it will take a bit to dry. So just keep that in mind. Um, so now we're gonna glue our tissue paper onto the wings of our dragonfly. So the way you're gonna do this is you're going to put the glue along the edges of the wings here. So carefully, you're gonna put the glue on the edges just where you want the tissue paper to kind of stick like so. I'm going to layer. So then you're going to just layer your tissue paper on top. And don't worry if the tissue paper kind of hangs off of your dragonfly wing, we're gonna clean that up at the end, we'll cut it off. So then what you're gonna keep doing is just layering your tissue paper. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can layer tissue paper on top of tissue paper so it can kind of have like a layered look. There we go. I'm gonna put a blue one here. Then I'm gonna layer pink on top of that blue. Go. I think I'm gonna layer yellow next. And you can feel free to do any pattern you'd like. If you just wanna do one wing, all one color, that's okay too. Um, I just like the layered look of different colors. There we go. And I think for this last part, I'm going to do yellow. Okay, so it may look messy on this side, but once you flip it over, you'll kind of see how it has that stained glass look. And again, don't worry about the tissue paper hanging off. Um, we're just gonna easily clean that up by cutting it off. So your dragonfly can have perfect stained glass wings. go. Carefully cut it off. And as you can see, the end result will be one tissue paper wing here. It looks like stained glass. Now what you did on this wing, you're going to do exactly on the other ones too. So again, marker side is where you're going to put the, or pencil side is where you're going to put your tissue paper. Now I'm thinking for this wing, I'm only going to do two colors. So let's just do pink and yellow. I think that'll look really cool. Pink and yellow. Do more yellow. I'm going to do pink. Go. Okay, 
Now dragonflies come in a variety of different colors. Um, so your dragonfly, con the construction paper of a dragonfly can be any color you'd like. Go. Slowly layering on the tissue paper. Okay, I'm kind of liking the way that looks. Looks really cool. Now we're gonna clean up the wings a bit here. So we can have a cleaner look. There you are. So now we have two wings done. One multicolored wing and one pattern wing. So for this one, next one, I'm going to layer three different colors I cut out again. Again, I'm gonna layer pink, blue, if you want to use other colors besides pink, blue, and uh, yellow, you can do that as well. And if you're layering one piece of tissue paper over another one, just put a little bit of glue on that tissue paper too, just so that the um, tissue paper you're laying on also sticks to that and it doesn't move. All right, it's a quick, easy craft. So there we go, we have that wing. Now we have one last wing to decorate before our dragonfly is ready to take flight. There we go. I think for this one, I'm going to do a pattern just like the one on the top. And this time I'm going to use blue. And hmm, what color would go well? I think I'm going to do more of the pink. I think it looks really cool with the purple. And we're gonna keep layering our tissue paper. Now, if you want only half of the tissue paper to show through, like so, you can do that as well. And just layer it on. So you kind of have like a layered look to your wing. Okay, we're almost done with our dragonfly. Almost ready to take flight. Oop, careful, let's get kind of sticky. Okay, I have the last piece of tissue paper layering on here. Okay. So now we're just going to clean up the edges here and just cut off the excess tissue paper that's kind of hanging off your dragonfly. There we go. Be very careful as the tissue paper is fragile. You don't want to accidentally take it off. Let's go. Let's go. And this is the end result of our dragonfly. Now, if you'd like, you can also decorate the abdomen or add googly eyes to the top. As you can see here, and it looks like we're going to admit our rest of our team so we can start trivia. Hey, hey, let me change my name quickly. 
So this is the end result of our dragonfly craft. That's so cool, yo. Oh my <laughs> gosh. If you put it against the light, you can kind of see the light shine through the tissue paper and it makes it look like stained glass. I love that. It's so simple, but so cool. Super easy to do. Super cool. Awesome job. Um, if you would like, you can also share. We would love to see your dragonfly. So please share it to the How to Train Your Dragonfly Facebook page. Yes, and I will link that uh, right now into the YouTube chat. Um, I also posted a, uh, um, a link to another craft, double craft, um, for you all to take, uh, uh, take part in. Uh, plan a craft. So that's in the YouTube comments as well. Like this. So cool. I need to make one of those stained glass ones for my window. Really cool, really easy. You can make it any color you'd like. All right. Well, should we get rocking and rolling with some uh, trivia? Let's do it. Great, Welcome, Danny. Hi. I've been waiting all week for this. <laughs> oh boy, Tim, I'm going to have you stumped, I think. <laughs> Well, welcome, Danny, to the How to Train uh, Your Dragonfly event. Um, Danny will be hosting trivia for us uh, for all things dragonflies, insects, sandalflies, you name it. So um, welcome, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I was listening to your talk a little bit ago, and many of, your question, many of the questions uh, will come straight from that. We'll, so we'll see how well people are paying attention. Ooh. Uh, all right. Let's get started. Insects are invertebrates, which means that they don't have a specific body feature. What do invertebrates not have that makes them invertebrates? What do you think? Invertebrates not have. That's a double in. negative. That's hard. Yeah, does in does in mean not? It must, because the opposite of invertebrates is vertebrates. What starts what else starts with in? Instantaneous. In insect, credible. In go ahead and share your answers in the YouTube uh, comments if you have an account. If you don't, no problem. Just we'll trust you. <laughs> is there is there another word that starts with in? Word in does in to me? No, I don't know. Inconspicuous. In Ooh. word. In verse. <laughs> I guess that's kind of like a the word. Triple itself, double negative. Yeah, inconspicuous would mean not not conspicuous, right? Yeah. Right. Involuntary. In incoherent, which is incoherent. how I usually am. <laughs> <laughs> interesting means not terresting, <laughs> as we all know. Not into resting. <laughs> no, that would be in interesting. <laughs> your inbox is your not box. Is not your box. Okay, this is fun. So. <laughs> Invertebrate means that they don't. Well, why don't we see if our research experts know what this one is? Inconceivable, Inconceivable. Scott. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, does anybody know what invertebrates? Let's repeat the question. What's the question, Danny? So, an invertebrate is so insects are invertebrates, which means that they don't have a specific body feature. And it's a body feature that vertebrates do have. So, what is the difference between invertebrates and vertebrates? Hmm. Well, I know there's a delay, but we're also getting more cool in words <laughs> in the chat. Hi, Katie. Incredible. Not credible. Yeah, that's That's true. also describes me. Not credible. <laughs> Not conceivable. Seems like some would have vertebrae and some would not. That is correct. What part of the body are vertebrae, though, Ethan? Just in case people have never heard that big fancy word. On the your your spine. Yeah, your backbone, right? So all of our invertebrates don't have a backbone. They don't have a spine. Um, and that includes our insects. All right, so thinking about insects, we often will divide insect bodies into three specific parts. 
And if you were paying attention about an hour ago, you will have this uh, a song seared into your memory that a certain Timothy Vargo was singing for us. Uh, what are the three parts that make up an insect's body? Mm. What we really need is to have Corey Zetz's daughter Ivy on this because she was killing it last time. Yeah. With the singing or with the trivia? <laughs> with the trivia. <laughs> <laughs> I think you all should do a musical event next time around. <laughs> I was I was killing it with the with the singing, but I think killing it, it has more than one meaning. Sure. I was I was I was in killing it. <laughs> Maybe we need to have a uh, insect karaoke one of these days. That would mm. be fun. Mm. Sounds like a hoot. So does it, do insects don't have sects? That's, yeah, that seems the opposite because isn't a sect like a section? Mm. Mm. A trisect. Yeah, insects are trisects. What are those three sections on their bodies? Well, Tim, I think you're going to have to sing it to remind folks one more time. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh <clears throat> Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. <laughs> am, am I right? That's right. Head, thorax, and abdomen. Ding, 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 ding. Very good. All right. And so, so we've got the head, thorax, and abdomen. But that's not the only defining feature of our insect bodies, right? Because they're also distinctive because all insects have the same number of legs. Well, for the most part. How many legs do insects traditionally have? Mm. There's always there's always exceptions to the rule, right? But our our sort of our our uh, if you were gonna look in a dictionary and look at the definition of an insect, you're probably gonna find an, an animal that doesn't have a backbone, that has a head, a thorax, an abdomen, and has how many legs? And interestingly, uh, whatever this number is, to be an insect, they have to have that number of legs at one point in their life. So like, if you look at a caterpillar, which is an insect, mm -hmm. uh, even though technically some of those aren't legs, uh, they, they have to have this number of legs at some point in their life cycle. Okay, that's an interesting clarification because I was, yeah, I was thinking like caterpillars, millipedes, centipedes, they definitely have a lot more legs than the classic number, but there's, they all will have at some point in their life cycle when they have X number of legs. So remember, put your put your answers in the chat if you think you know how many uh, legs an insect has. And and a little hint, they're in a super order. So kingdom, phylum, all those. There's all these like super or and there's little in between levels, and they are in the super order hexapod. If that helps. Hexapod. So they have pod number of legs. Ah. <laughs> Into the unknown. Jeffrey Taylor not helping. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to post your photos from your craft on our uh, Facebook event page or you'd love to see them. All right, well, a hexapod. Hex makes me think of a hexagon. And that doesn't really help because I can never remember which is which on those shapes. Uh, but I think that a hexagon, how many sides is a hexagon? You need more hands in order to make one, I think, Ethan. <laughs> nice try, though. I tried. I think you were making six, though. Is that what you're doing over there? Uh, that, was, that was my feeble attempt. All right, six. Yeah, so we're looking for animals with six legs or specifically three pairs of legs. All right, and it's funny that you mentioned caterpillars, Tim, because because yeah, caterpillars don't have six legs, but they transform into butterflies, which do. And a, a very funny thing about butterflies is where their taste buds are located. Do you mm. know where a butterfly's taste buds are located? Ooh. If I was a butterfly and there was this just like delicious looking bowl of ice cream sitting in front of me, mm. and I just wanted to taste it so bad, 
What part of my body am I going to stick in that ice cream in order to taste it? Hmm. Would it be their wings? Because like, if I'm trying to get ice cream, it's going to get all over me and then I'd turn the color of that ice cream. So maybe what is an orange flavored ice cream? While we're thinking about this, I just want to give a little shout out, shout out to Katie. I don't know if you're still listening, but it's it's so cool to hear from you. I haven't seen you in a while and and uh, hope you're doing well. And you too, Scott. And you too, Jeff. Keep chatting in that uh, I'm YouTube. also Katie. <laughs> um, Ethan, I don't really know where you're going with that thought process. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going either. I was trying to imagine i think that if they if they tasted with their wings it'd probably slow them down when they're flying if they got well their wings, right? i remember in maggie's talk and ethan's talk uh hearing a lot about butts <laughs> so mm. that, yeah, that's where i'm gonna put my money do butterflies have tongues and Ooh. why else would they be called butterflies but so i think this is a i think danny's trying to trick us and i'm gonna call their bluff and say that it's the butt yeah we're gonna get off we're gonna get off of this topic and i'm just gonna tell you the answer to this one is their feet no i was gonna say butterfingers <laughs> that would not have been correct <laughs> <laughs> all right let's talk about since this event is about dragonflies right let's talk about our dragonfly friends so i have a list of foods I'm curious, which of the following foods do we think that dragonflies eat at some point in their life cycle? So, so, so of any of the species of dragonflies, are there any dragonflies out there that eat mosquitoes? Are there any dragonflies out there that eat tadpoles? Are there any dragonflies out there that eat small fish? What about dragonflies that eat damselflies? And then lastly, are there dragonflies that eat smaller dragonflies? So those are our five options. Mosquitoes, tadpoles, small fish, damselflies, and smaller dragonflies. Which of those do you think are actual items that a dragonfly might eat at some point in its life? That's quite the buffet. Yeah, that's a lot of options. <laughs> Is there ice cream on that buffet? I noticed that ice cream was not on the list. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, I wonder also, if dragonflies, I... they wouldn't be using their feet to taste this food like the butterflies, right? But they do. I think, Maggie, you talked about it earlier this morning. They have a pretty unique way that they, whenever they want to eat, how they do it, right? They can't sit still to eat. They can sit still to eat. They, but they catch, they can catch prey while they're flying. Oh, right, right, they Which can't, is yeah. really cool. You're yeah. thinking but of sharks. If you're super lucky, you will see one perched with a big mouthful of something, mm. uh, just chomping away. It's really cute. Yeah. We, we have reached a milestone uh, because Katie has given our first correct answer. And I'm wondering if the delay on this is, is uh, a little bit more than we expected. Yeah, it might be. Uh, yes, nice job, Katie. The, the butterflies do taste with their feet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so what I was thinking, Maggie, was that they, um, to catch their food, they wouldn't walk across the ground to catch it, right? Right. Would there ever be a situation where a dragonfly would see some food on the ground over there and walk over there to get it? Not that I know of. Or could they even? Could they? Yeah. Is that even physiologically possible? That is a very good question. Like what if there was a tunnel where it couldn't fly? And at the very end of the tunnel, there was a buffet of mosquitoes there. Was that a foreshadowing? <laughs> so, so remember to put your posts, your answers in chat. And Danny, maybe repeat the question one more time and then we'll. Yeah, here we go. So I'm curious, which of the following do we think that dragonflies might eat, be part of their diet? Mosquitoes, tadpoles, small fish, damselflies, and other smaller dragonflies.
Now, while, while you're thinking about that one, we'll, uh, we'll think about, we'll do a trivia question within a trivia question. So Ooh. all those things I listed, all those options, what do they all have in common? What did you all notice? Danny's going meta on us. Going meta on you. This is, this is a question for the panelists. What, what do all those things have in common those, that I listed? They're all in delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's just your opinion, man. <laughs> I don't know. Tadpoles sound kind of interesting. Thanks. <laughs> um, let me so let me help you out. I know I know you're a research scientist, so you're probably overthinking the question a little bit here. They sound mean. maybe classified as plants or as, animals. Yeah, they're all other animals. Well, so we, that means we got that an answer. Wise. We got an answer. Oh, we did. Katie's oh. gonna oh, say. Please. Katie said, "I'm gonna go with just mosquitoes." Just mosquitoes. All right. We've got a guess on, on the mosquitoes. Um, so if our dragonflies only ate mosquitoes, or even if they ate all those things on the list, what would we have to classify them as? Mosquitovores. Mosquitovores. I think we call those muscovores for short. Uh, mosquitovores. Scott says, I had not heard until recently about dragonflies eating horseflies, but have heard they will eat their peers. My answer is all of the above perhaps at other stages in life. Ooh, a bold guess by Scott, all of the above. Sometimes taking a big risk like that can pay off. But that wasn't even an option, was it? I mean, it wasn't not an option. That's true. <laughs> it, was, it was not an in option. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I just said which of the following, and the answer was indeed all of those things. There nice are work, Scott. That will eat any of those things on that list, depending on how big they are, and how bold they are and what habitat they're in. Maggie, have you ever seen a dragonfly eating another smaller dragonfly? Um, oh boy. Probably. My name's not Maggie, but uh, I was on a, a survey with Maggie once and I saw a little damselfly. That I was just watching with my binoculars, it was beautiful. And it just alit. And, and just as I was watching it alight, another Dragon or damsel just went whoom, just <laughs> here. Dang. Like, oh, be free. Oh, okay, you're gone. <laughs> oh. Yep, that'll happen. All right. And then as we were kind of alluding to during that question, because they eat all those things, there were, you didn't hear any plants on that list. That means that we classify them as what type of eat eater? What type of uh, what type of blankivore are they? <laughs> Carnage boar. Meativores. Um, Ethan, can you give me some screen sharing privileges? Because I have some picture questions. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth, you are the host. Can you please make Danny co host? Oh, I made you host. I'm okay. One second here. I'm going to need all your help to monitor the uh, responses in the chat when this happens. Got right. it. Should be good to we go. have a guess of carnivore. From oh, Carnivore. Oh, we got it? Yes. The answer is carnivore. Beth Heller comes through. Oh, nice, Beth. Ding, 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 ding. All right. So for our next question, Insects, many, many different insects have this feature on their body that's highlighted here. On dragonflies, they have them too, but they're usually pretty small. They're not a very noticeable noticeable part of their body. Um, but it's a, it's a part of their body that they use for sensing, for touch, and sometimes for smell. And uh, what, is, what is that? What is this picture highlighting on the head of the dragonfly here? What do we call that body part? Is that a narwhal? The, it is not a narwhal because I'm there are two of them. It looks like a double uh, unicorn. There you go. That's now, now we're more on the right track. That's a dicorn, Ethan. Maybe it's a unicorn club tail. <laughs> is that a type of dragonfly species, Maggie? It is. Why, why is it called that? I don't know. I could look it up real quick. Is that what this is? Nope. Well, I don't no, know. Because, I, I know because it's not a club tail because the eyes, because I learned this this morning from Maggie's, the eyes are like and a club tail only come to a point, and this one is sharing more eye like space. I think that was a spike tail. Close. 
So the club tails have separated eyes. I mean, I mean spike tail. Sorry. Spike tail has this the point. And, and this is not a spike tail. Right. Or a club tail. Or is a, a darner? It does look like a darner. Yes. I'm gonna look up to see if I can see why the unicorn club tail is. It looks like one of my chin hairs from Brittany. <laughs> I was gonna say this. <laughs> The space between the head and thorax kind of looks like uh, the space yeah, outside of my beard here. All right, do we have any guesses in the chat as far as what this body part is called? Got a big hint for everyone. Although most of the kids playing trivia right now probably won't remember. But we used to have to put these on top of our TV in order to get a signal as well. The same name. Ooh. Mm. Satellite? Yeah, if only. Dragonfly horn. <laughs> I guess the, I guess we uh, they still like they're still on top of cars to get a radio signal, right? Oh yeah, still a thing. Well, all right. Well, I think we should go ahead and reveal the answer on this one. What do we think? I think if we wait thirty seconds, somebody's going to come through. Okay, you really, 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 really uh, uh, have a lot of faith in our audience here. Yes. So see, look at that. Remember, right. As if I, Brittany Peters. Good job. Oh, Brittany, I had to go and uh, give Tim the, the ego points there, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Brittany. That's an antenna. Thanks, Brittany. Very unique on, on dragonflies. They're very small compared to most other insects. Well, and, and Katie got and, it. And oh, inter nice. got interestingly, there, there are actually antenna that you can put on dragonflies to track them uh, that, that researchers do. They'll actually mm -hmm. put separate antennas that dragonflies are big enough that they can do that. You'd think if you put an antenna, a separate one on it, they would just not be able to fly, but they can. They're pretty strong flyers. All right, I'm trying to, we're just going to do it this way. Oh. This not... is not a dragonfly. Are you sure? I'm, I'm pretty sure. You know how I can tell? How? Because it has a backbone right there. Yeah. <laughs> so this, however, is a very famous predator of dragonflies. Mm. The bird. So we're going to see if anyone knows what kind of bird is this that you can often see flying through the air. And Maggie mentioned that dragonflies are pretty acrobatic flyers. And so to hunt one, you would have to be a pretty acrobatic flyer yourself. And so we can often see this bird hunting down dragonflies through the air. I, I like how you're kind of like bringing in the whole spectrum. You're, you're asking questions about uh, butterflies and other non dragonflies, but relating them to dragonflies. That's, that's very talented. I also want to say that, uh, Beth mentions that unicorn club tail has an itty bitty horn in the wedge between the top of the two eyes. Wow. Oh, it, it wasn't in my like, field like the design on its head. That's the color, like the color is different and it looks like a horn. I don't know. We'll have to have Beth as a, as an insect expert in one of these meetings. Yeah. <laughs> you may find this bird hunting for dragonflies in Three Bridges Park in Milwaukee. That's true. Because there is an abundance of dragonflies in Three Bridges Park. So where the prey is, the predator will follow, right? That's right. And is this bird also called a sparrowhawk? I believe, I, I think. Um, you're going to have to tell me. <laughs> well, have you ever seen the old uh, uh, Foghorn Leghorn Warner Brothers cartoons? They had a they had a chicken hawk on there, and I can't remember their names, but the name of the chicken hawk. But it it there was this little sparrow that kept trying to eat this big chicken hawk, or something like that, or the little chicken hawk. Anyway, oh no, Foghorn Leghorn was a chicken, and there was a little chicken hawk that kept trying to eat him. Regardless. All of a lot of our hawks have different names, like colloquially, like chicken hawk and, and pigeon hawk. And I think this one is called a sparrow hawk, but I could be wrong. So I'm just looking it up right now. Eurasian sparrow hawk. 
is a bird from Europe. Um, oh, but there's a whole list of other species that a sparrowhawk could refer to colloquially. Hmm. I don't know. Does this bird eat other birds? I didn't think they were big enough to eat other birds. I, you know, I think I think it mostly eats insects, like big dragonflies and mice. Uh, so maybe it's maybe I'm thinking of I don't know. They they could eat a sparrow. They're, they're they pretty. Could, yeah. They could probably pull it off. The, the, this bird, I mean, we have to admit this this bird looks real cute right here, right? Like this is you just wanna you just wanna go ah. But they oh. they are pretty vicious predators, aren't they? You know, if you if you ever if you ever uh, handling a bird, um, and and raptors, if you that the word raptor means to to kill with your feet. So that's why, like the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park, you had to worry about their feet. Uh, and so, even though this cute-looking bird uh, looks well, very cute, there's still a lot of power in those feet. And that's what. Uh, so if you were to be handling this bird, you probably wouldn't worry so much about that bill, but you'd be worrying about that feet, especially if you're a dragonfly, or a mouse, or a sparrow, potentially. Wow, it is fit at the time to reveal. What do you think, Ethan? Um, I'm not going to push my luck again. I say go. <laughs> it's in the mayor. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh. Got it. I mean, like I said, let's wait three seconds because then <laughs> Scott's going to pull through. <laughs> I've seen these hovering hunters and three bridges part. Kestrels. Who said that? Nice work, Scott. Scott, nice job. Thanks, Scott. American Kestrel. Correct. All right. Do we have time for two last questions? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. OK. All right. So here is our next one. Oh. Oh. Aw. So say, we talked a little bit about some of the different ways to tell the difference between dragonflies and damselflies. And one way is by looking at their eyeballs. And one thing I learned is that it's not a universal rule, but I think in the case of this picture, it is clearly showing one of these is a damselfly and one of them is a dragonfly. And so the question is, which is which? And I'm looking at Maggie to confirm that these are indeed one is a damsel and one is a dragon. Okay, great. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the family of fake out dragonflies. <laughs> no. So which one of these, left or right, is a damselfly and which one is a dragonfly? And if you want to really impress us, tell us how you can tell the difference. Okay, so. We've and while, got... while that's happening, maybe we're going to figure out what species we got here. Oh, boy. Oh. How many species are there in the world, Maggie, of damselflies and dragonflies? Over 6,000. Oh, sure. You know them all, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gotten <in> there. <laughs> Probably have a, a handful. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many families? Because you introduced us to six and three this morning, but that's just Wisconsin families, right? Right. Um, worldwide, I'm not sure about dragons, but I think there are 20 damsel families. Um, and we have three in Wisconsin. Cool. Uh, so there's a lot to be learned. And, and here's, a, here's a trick. If you're ever doing trivia sessions with Danny, you can you can pretend that you well i know it because i'm the host right but so i'm not going to say it i'm not going to give it away uh but then danny turns around and says okay tim go ahead give the answer and then i pretended like i knew and then i didn't know so i'm just going to say i straight out don't know i didn't follow all of that i don't think <laughs> <laughs> if i've stumped tim then that means we found a pretty good trivia question i think <laughs> It, I've, it followed in my head perfectly well. So I was just going to say, does it look like the one on the left is snacking a little bit? Potentially. Is, it, is that just like a stick that it's holding on to? Looks like oh, it looks like it's holding on to a stick, but potentially in the mandibles, there's like a tiny little dot. Oh, sure. The world's smallest mosquito in there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Soon to be smaller. 
So we talked about how dragonflies are carnivores. Is that the case, Maggie, for damselflies as well? That is the case. Yep, they are very cute, um, but they are also very ferocious. But they just happen to be very cute also while they're being ferocious. Oh. Us, to us at least. <laughs> but I do know we have a spike tail in there of some sort, right? Um, I'm leaning maybe more towards an emerald or a skimmer. Uh, what? It's too much of a indent. The, eye, the eyes coming together, there's too much together? Too much together. Mm. Not quite a spike. Okay. Point. Um, also, if you look at the thorax, the reason I'm leaning emerald is maybe the, the coloration on the thorax mixed with somewhat of green eyes, um, but it could also potentially be a skimmer. And it might not be limited to Milwaukee either. I literally just Googled dragonfly eyes and damselfly eyes to find these pictures. So. Okay. Yeah, it's so we got probably... a question from Beth. Maggie, does the damselfly have simple eyes? Three question mark between the compound eyes? I've never noticed that before. Beth, that is such a good question because looking at this picture and sometimes looking at um, close up pictures in the field guide, I wonder also what that is. Um, hmm. Do any of you know what that is? Are you referring to this spot within the eyeball? No, the one quite right in the middle oh, of the right head. There, yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet it's in one of my books. Yeah, we've kind of in this conversation uh, revealed our hand a little bit. But uh, while Maggie's looking that up, we'll go ahead and say that the difference that we're using to diagnose these is the eyeballs and whether they are touching or not. And so on the right, we have eyes touching, and that is a sign of a dragonfly. Whereas on the left, we have eyes pretty far apart. That is a sign of a damselfly. Now, as I learned this morning, there are actually some dragonfly species that don't have their eyes touching, but they have to be pretty far apart to be damselfly. Maggie, you mentioned a uh, hammerhead shark is the analogy, and that is almost exactly what I think of when I look at here. So. Um, that's how we can tell the difference between these two by looking. I love the hammerhead shark analogy. That's, that's, that's something I'm never going to forget. Yeah, hammerhead or even like a barbell, like a dumbbell. Sure. Yeah. Um, in my book here, it's pointing to those three little, um, so where the antenna attach as well as that middle eye, and it says a celly. O C E L L I, um, which sounds I related, so I'll have to look into that more. It's another term for a simple I, which is what Beth had just said in the comments. Yeah. Cool. So, all right, our final question. We've been talking all about dragons and dragon. Oh. We've been talking about dragonflies, but as we all know, dragonflies got their name from dragons. And so here we have three very famous dragon species. And my question for you is, what is the name of each of these three dragons? I've just seen two of these movies recently. Well, the one on the right looks like that Ethan yeah. is going to definitely be stumped by at least one of these. That's true. Yeah. I'm going to call the one on the right Mo. Mo? Because he looks just like my cat. <laughs> he does kind of look like a cat, doesn't he? <laughs> That's probably why I love those movies so much. Oh. <laughs> so the one on the bottom, that kind of looks like that, uh, like out of Where the Wild Things Are or something like that. But I don't know who, I, actually I couldn't name any of these. I can tell you what two of the, the movies are from, but I don't know the names oh, of them. Oh, it's an amazing series book series. Yeah, the middle one is from a book series. And yeah, the, the left and the right are from movies. Scott is out. He, he, his kids are grown. He's out. The middle one kind of reminds me of a Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, it does sort of have a Loch Ness Monster feel, doesn't it? <laughs> the, arched, the arched neck coming out of the water. Beth says Puff. Puff. Oh, good guess, but none of these are named Puff. I did not include 
magic uh, the puff is a magic dragon i only included real dragons in this so that's <laughs> <laughs> so so are any of them named pete they are not no oh. katie yeah. says mushu yes good job katie so yeah the first one from mulan that's mushu nice Mushu, who will not be appearing in the live action Mulan movie when it eventually releases. Oh, is it really not? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they there's no Mushu in, in the movie. Dang. How can that be? Isn't Wait, is it what? coming out in August? Well, it's supposed to come out in March, so who knows? Because oh. <laughs> it was supposed to come out in July and then they pushed it back again, so. Yeah. I feel like I have a wild guess for the bottom one. Go for it. Let's hear it. Is it Aragon? So you're half right. How so about Aragon is the name of the book series. Okay, I've never it's read the not book. the name of the dragon in the series. Okay. Do you know the name of the dragon, Ethan? I honestly don't remember the name of the dragon. I read the whole series and I don't remember the name. Yeah. Oh. So, so the, the dragon's name is Sephira. Oh, that's oh. a pretty name. From the Aragon series, which is pretty cool. It's a... Uh, kids fantasy series but the cool part is that it's written by a kid like the i think christopher paolini was only 14 or 15 when he what? published it first and these are like 100 page long novels hundreds of pages long novels yeah i need to read them i've Very never read them with, uh, that mm-hmm. name was not on the tip of my tongue <laughs> <laughs> and scott don't pretend like you're not what, reading these books still just because you're just because russell's grown right <laughs> uh and then the last one of course are uh our namesake for the uh, the program today, How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, we learned how to train this dragon, and its name is Toothless. Toothless. Ah, my favorite. Because he has no teeth. Well, something to learn teeth. for everyone. They just pop out. He only sometimes has teeth. He has retractable <laughs> teeth. That's <laughs> claws. In tooth. Well, if yeah. you enjoyed this trivia session, uh, when when can we see Danny at work again? I'll be back this time next week, same time, same place. Woo! Oh yeah, such the a highlight. Yard versity event. So thanks, thanks for so tuning much, in, Danny. everybody, and thanks for doing this, Danny. And and I hope you uh, all are able to join us next weekend. We've got a couple of lectures on Friday, and then. Uh, the kickoff for Yardversity. We're really, really, really excited about that. So uh, I hope you all can join us next week. Go to the Urban Ecology Center website for information. And uh, I hope you guys, some of you can get out and see some dragonflies today. And and uh, and uh, if you see any great, uh, any any sightings, let us know. And uh, And next week, we'll be able to give you some more information about uh, where to put your dragonfly sightings. Be sure to uh, put your dragonfly sighting in the Facebook event page and also share your craft in the Facebook event page. We'd love to see uh, what you made and the things that you found. Um, I'm happy to help with ID as well if anybody has questions on their pictures. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks everybody thanks for coming everybody again. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Bye, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. Great to see you, like Katie, Scott, Beth. It was really fun to, to hang Brittany. out with you guys. Yeah. Brittany. All right, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye. See ya. Bye.